Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Psych 308 Reloaded. We are, as you know, going to finish talking about sex addiction today, a very, 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 very controversial topic. How many varies did I just say? A very, 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 very controversial topic, as you know, if you watched the previous lecture. And then we're going to move into another topic, also somewhat controversial, exercise addiction. Exercise addiction. So I'm going to be asking you to think about your own exercise habits when we get to that. And I'm going to be asking you to complete an exercise survey as part of a class activity when we get to that. But for now, who remembers, who remembers of the three types or subtypes rather of individuals who've been studied with regard to hypersexuality or sex addiction? Who remembers what the three categories were that I left you with last class and said we were going to explore today? Anybody? Ah, I can't hear you. We're on video. I can't hear you. And we're not live. We are asynchronous. So I want you to see if you can remember. Take a moment. If you said hypersexual men, female survivors of sex abuse, and paraphilic sexually addictive persons, then you got the answer correct. Now, next question. Who remembers which of those three I said has a grounding in the actual diagnostic literature? Who remembers? If you said paraphilic sexually addicted persons, you are correct of the three. That is the only one that actually has a grounding or actually has a grounding in the clinical diagnostic literature and the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. That said, I want to talk about some research today on these three categories. So whoosh, meet me on the next slide. See you there.